adamantium, the strongest material in the Marvel Universe. It is said that it cannot be destroyed with a physical force, gather enough of it in one place, and even a nuclear explosion won't leave a scratch. But can a material as strong as adamantium exist in real life? What are the properties of this wonder metal? Is it just a creative liberty, or can it be grounded in science? Adamantium Oricalcum, Mithril, the most famous fantasy metals, extremely durable and almost indestructible. Adamantium in the Marvel Universe has at least some scientific basis. In the official handbook, it is stated that adamantium is a virtually indestructible steel alloy, named after adamantine from Greek mythology. It is impossible to say how strong it really is, since in the comics it was only destroyed using magic or superhuman abilities. Given sufficient mass, Adamantium could survive a direct hit from a nuclear weapon. Adamantium is a man-made material, obtained by mixing steel, vibranium and unspecified chemical raisins. Steel is simple. We can assume that since adamantium is a steel alloy, its properties are similar to existing steel alloys. Addition of steel is probably the main cause of adamantium's magnetic properties. Vibranium, on the other hand, can't be compared to anything existing in our universe. It exhibits magical properties, manipulation of energy which breaks laws of physics, and finally chemical raisins, unspecified chemical raisins. This can be anything, but looking at the chemical raisins used in production of polymers, their main function could be to bond other materials used in production of adamantium. Chemical raisins are commonly used in today's manufacturing. In a process of curing, they stabilize, becoming much harder and tougher. And looking again into Marvel's handbook, we can see that adamantium goes through a similar process for 8 minutes after raisins are mixed, adamantium can be molded, if kept at a temperature of 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. After this, its molecular structure becomes extremely stable and can't be molded any further. On the surface, it is very close to thermosetting polymers or steel aging. To sum it up, metallic appearance, properties and malleability can be attributed to addition of steel. Vibranium adds the magical element and raises durability to extreme levels and chemical raisins make adamantium stable and in a process similar to curing, allow for a structure that can defy laws of physics. All of this produces extremely durable, tough and very dense metallic alloy. So is it possible to replicate it using cutting-edge manufacturing technology of today's world? Adamantium's extraordinary properties make it a prime candidate as a weapons and utility material. Armor, shields, swords, bullets, arrow tips prison cells, bunkers, and the most iconic of them all, adamantium chair, Wolverine's adamantium skeleton and claws, able to cut through a steel like a butter, cannot be broken, even with an extreme force. On a scale from 1 to 10, all properties would be 11, or even 100. But can it be replicated in real life? I don't think so. If it could be, American military would already be close to it. In reality, materials have many properties, and to obtain a material exceeding in one, we need to sacrifice the other. Adamantium exceeds in almost all spheres, so comparing it to any single material would be pointless. That's why I will look at the most jarring characteristics of this magic alloy and try to find what existing material can be a baseline for it. Since adamantium is top of the line on every front, it is fair to assume that it is better than anything we could currently produce. I think the most important properties to look at are density, hardness and strength. So let's talk more about them and make some comparisons to existing materials. Density tells us how much material is packed into a defined volume. Mathematically, it is defined as a mass divided by a volume and expressed in kilograms per cubic meter. It depends on the mass and size of atoms, their arrangement in microstructure, pressure 
and temperature. There is a correlation between density and strength of a material, but the other factors play a huge role. For example, gold has a higher density compared to steel, but steel is stronger and harder than gold. Adamantium is said to be extremely dense. Closest to the concrete number is a weight of Wolverine's skeleton, but even that is a speculation. We don't know what percent of a bone is adamantium. Is it only coated? Does it bond with a bone? How does the density change? I think that it is fair to assume that the density of adamantium would be close to or higher than the densest materials on the earth. If we talk about top of the line, star cores are the densest in the universe. It cannot exist on the earth without immense gravity holding it together. Steel has an average density of 7850 kilograms per cubic meter. Lead is 11,350, gold is 19,300 and the densest element, osmium, is 22,500 kilograms per cubic meter. Hard and brittle, transition metal from platinum group, used in alloys with platinum and iridium. There are two physical phenomena that contribute to osmium's high density. First, high atomic number and small atomic radius. Osmium has 76 protons, 114 neutrons in the nucleus, and 76 electrons orbiting it. High number of particles mean that more mass is concentrated in a smaller space. Pair it with a small radius of electron orbits and osmium atom on itself is pretty dense. The second thing is crystal lattice structure. Osmium atoms are in hexagonal closely packed cells, instead of cubic, are hexagonal, with six corner atoms and one face atom in the first plane, then three atoms in the middle plane, and again six and one atom in the last plane. This structure allows for atoms to fill up space in a ratio of 3 to 1. Less free space means higher density, so steel, vibranium and chemical raisins may form hexagonal crystals. We don't know the exact atomic composition of vibranium, but we could assume that it can be compared to platinum class metals. Adding a fictional element may allow for smaller, more compact atoms to fill empty spaces in hexagonal structure, rising density even further. That's why I think it is safe to say that adamantium's density can be at least higher than the density of osmium. Hardness is a measure of resistance to scratching or indenting a material. There are many scales of hardness, Rockwell, Vickers, Shore, and most commonly known, Mohs scale. It is experimental, and materials can be ranked by scratching one on the other. Material that leaves a scratch on the other material is harder and placed above on the scale. It goes from 1 to 10, 1 being for example talc and 10 being a diamond. It isn't linear, but exponential, meaning a 10 on the scale is a few times harder than 9. Steel ranks around 7 on the scale, and in Vickers it has a hardness of around 150 to 180 Hv. Adamantium is a super hard material, able to cut through even the hardest steel with an ease. We can assume that on this scale it would be ranked at 11. So let's compare it to the hardest material, diamond. It is 10 on the most scale, and in the Vickers test it reaches 10,000 Hv. Diamonds are made of carbon, so nothing special. Then why diamonds are so hard? Carbon is very good at bonding with other elements. Atoms of carbon can form four single covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. The carbon-carbon single bond is called sigma bond, the strongest covalent bond. Already it is looking good, but when we look at diamond's crystalline structure, it gets better. Diamond's lattice cells are similar to face-centered cubic lattice, but since carbon atoms can bond with four more carbon atoms, additional spaces can be filled. It resembles two FCC structures intertwined together. Tetrahedral bonds fill the structure to the brim. Compared to osmium, we can see that in some directions it would be easier to serve atomic bonds. Diamonds don't face this problem, since there is no clear path of less resistance for dislocation to occur. If adamantium could have a similar structure, its hardness would easily exceed hardness of a diamond. Combination of atoms with a high number of elemental particles that can form many sigma bonds and fit 
neatly in a crystalline structures would be ideal to reach adamantium's outstanding properties. Hardness and strength are not the same. Cutting through a steel takes a combination of both. For example, hardness allows for adamantium claws to separate layers of material and strength to not deform when a force is acting on them. Take a hardened glass and try to scratch it. As the name suggests, it is hard, but apply too much force trying to bend it or drop it on the ground and it breaks. Steel, on the other hand, cannot be broken without much greater force, but can be scratched rather easily. Strength is defined as ability to withstand applied load without failure or permanent deformation. Stress and strain are two physical quantities that are used to determine strength of a material. Stress is calculated by dividing an applied force by the active area at which this force acts. When a force is applied to an object, it deforms, changing its dimensions. Strain is a ratio of deformation to the original length of an object. Those two values can be used to create the stress-strain curve and in the case of adamantium, its composition, looks and properties suggest that it should follow Hooke's law. This means that in the first region, stress and strain are proportional. A bit after the proportional region, we have a point called elastic limit. From the engineering perspective, this is a strength of a material. Crossing this point causes material to deform permanently and when the load is removed, it won't go back to its original shape. And when talking about extremes, ultimate tensile strength, the maximum stress that a material can handle, is a more common comparison point. Commonly used steel A35 has a tensile strength of 550 MPa. Graphene, dubbed the strongest material, with UTS up to 130,000 MPa, reaches this number only when tested as a monolayer membrane. Comparing adamantium to a material with atomic thickness is not optimal. There is Kevlar, with UTS of almost 3800 MPa, a fraction of graphene strength, but at least we know that it can be used to make something. The strongest type of steel is a maraging steel, reaching up to 2500 MPa. Addition of nickel and cobalt, plastic deformation, precise heating and cooling cycles allow formation of optimal microstructure with high strength and hardness. In standard carbon steels, carbon separates from austenite, forming cementite. In case of maraging steel, this process is partially halted, and instead of perlite cementite mix, we get martensite. Similar to diamond lattices, more carbon atoms are bound to iron atoms. Applying this logic to adamantium could suggest that during a process of cooling, structures akin to martensite may form. Combining this with an unknown atomic configuration of vibranium, adamantium may be able to reach extraordinary density, strength and hardness. In a fictional universe, metal alloy as strong as adamantium may exist. Comparing it to real-life materials gave an insight into its possible structure and what physical phenomena would make it possible. The most important things are atoms with a large atomic number and small radius of electron orbitals, compact crystal lattice structure like in osmium, elements in microstructure should form as many covalent sigma bonds as possible. Like in diamonds. Tetrahedral bonds and highly intertwined lattice structure similar to martensite steels. If we consider addition of mysterious raisins and vibranium, it is possible for it to exist in a fictional universe. Then what about our world? We can manufacture outstanding materials, but in extreme cases they only excel in one property and lack in others. To achieve something with even a fraction of adamantium's strength, we would need need new elements that don't exist. I only talked about few mechanical properties. Add to that the extreme thermal resistance that allows withstanding of a direct nuclear blast which reaches temperatures higher than the sun's core and it is pretty clear that it can't exist in the real world. The final verdict is, a material similar to adamantium is impossible to create for us. In fiction, it has some scientific plausibility, but requires physic bending elements or some form of 
magic. Check out my other videos, subscribe and leave a like. And see you in the next one.